Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third graders. My name is Mrs. Nix, and I am so excited to be here with you and to help support you to become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. Happy Monday. This week's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna focus really on writing. We're gonna look at that explanatory essay this week. And I wanna say that because if you share some of that writing with me and mail it down here to our PBS studio, here comes the address. They're gonna put it up there for you. If you mail it over to me, I'd love to see what you've been working on all week long. If you do that and include your return address, I'll make sure that I send you one of these fun activity books in the mail so that you can have some fun uh, doing some puzzles and some different mazes and things like that. So send it in to me and let me know what you're working on or write me a letter and tell me what you've been learning. I'd love to hear it. Okay, are you ready to get started today? Excellent. So we have a few things we're gonna go through. We're gonna warm up our brains, we're gonna do a little bit of grammar practice, and then we're gonna dive into that writing. But before we do that, I wanna just put a little plug out there. So I was talking with my kids over the weekend and I said, you guys, I need something to share with my third grade students on PBS. What do you guys think? And this is one of the books that they were sharing. My boys loved it. This one's called Stink and the Incredible uh, Galactic Jawbreaker. It's hilariously funny. So if you enjoy stuff that's funny, you might wanna check this out. You can do that at your local library or you can go on to Sora online and check it out there. Speaking of Sora, in Fresno Unified, we've got a little friendly competition that's happening. We're trying to track the schools that are checking out the most books on Sora and we count down the top five schools in our school district. Do you wanna know who number five was last week? Me too, let's check it out. I've got a little piece of paper right here. It's gonna, oh my gosh, are you wanting to know who it is? It's Baird Middle School, so go Explorers, nice job. So you guys are gonna go right up here on our board for the top checkouts. So make sure you're checking out those books and maybe your school can be up on our poster next week. All right, let's get started this morning. Let's warm up those brains by looking at some of these high frequency words. Read them with me. These are words that we've been practicing over the last few weeks. So they're gonna be something you're familiar with, but if by chance you come across one and you go, you know what, I don't remember that one. I don't remember how to spell it. Remember, you're responsible for your learning success. So jot it down and then you can practice it. All right, here we go. Fall, far, fast, find, first, five, found, fly, four and four. Did you read those faster than me? That's amazing, great job. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit this week about, and I'm gonna do this out of, a little bit out of order here, but I wanna talk about some plural noun practice. So we worked on this over the last few weeks, and so these are all gonna be things that we're just reviewing. Now, plural nouns, we talked about some of the different ways that we're gonna spell those, and I've got three different questions here that you're gonna help me be able to identify which way is the correct way to spell a plural noun. Do you remember some of those rules that we had to do? Let's look at this first one and then talk it through. It says, all the couch, so clearly we need to say couches because it's all the couches. All the couches are on sale at Adams Furniture Store. How do we spell couches? Let's look at all of our choices. Now remember, Couch ends with CH. Do you remember what the rule was? Do we just add an S? Do we need to add ES? Maybe we just leave it the same? Or it sounds like couches, I hear a Z. Is it that one? What do you think? You are correct, you guys are so good. It is B. We need to have ES when it is uh, has a CH or an SH at the end. Good job, nice memory, impressed. Let's do another one. How about the word penny? 
Let's look at it in a sentence. I found five pennies. Remember, we need to change this. I found five pennies on the floor. How do we spell pennies? Do you remember? Let's look. Do I just add an S? Do I change my Y to an I and then add ES? Do I need to put an EYS? Or do I leave it with the Y and add IES? What was our rule? Do you remember? That's right, right there. I hear you guys. Good job. We want to change the Y to an I and then add ES. Good. All right, last one. We're going to look at the word box. And I think I've got a little shadow there. There we go. We're going to look at this word box. And it says, will you help me stack the, and we want to change it to box to boxes. What do we do when the word ends with an X? Let's look at our choices. Do we add ESS? Do we add IES, boxes? Do we put an S or do we use an ES? Which one do you think it was? Good job, you are correct. Woohoo! did you guys get 100% there? Nice job, third grade, super excited. Okay, I wanna dive right into some of this writing. Okay, so when I say we're gonna do writing this week, we're gonna go through a multitude of different things. So this week, what we're gonna look at is the explanatory essay. And I wanna talk about what is in an explanatory essay. What makes up an, what is an explanatory essay, right? Okay, let's look. In an explanatory essay, you have to include a topic and it's gonna share some information about that topic. Then it uses paragraphs to give facts, definitions, details about the topic. It's gonna to use linking words to connect those ideas and that it also has a concluding statement or a concluding section. We're gonna see all of these pieces today. Okay, so when I am thinking about doing some writing, as a writer, I have to go through what's called the writing process. And the writing process looks like this. So I'm gonna have a plan, draft, revise, edit, and publish. This week, if you hang out with me all week long, you're gonna see each of these pieces and how to do that to make your writing the best it can be. Today, we're gonna to focus on the plan. So the plan consists of all of these steps. Let's talk about them. So we're gonna start with a pre-write. The pre-write just simply means that you plan and gather your ideas and information. You wanna know what you wanna talk about and you're gonna go and do a little bit of research for it. You're gonna to wanna to get out some sort of a graphic organize beca organizer because you need to organize your ideas. Where are you gonna put your notes? And how are you gonna make sure that things are being told in a logical, sequential order? The other thing that you wanna keep in mind is you need to consider what is your purpose for writing? Who is, who's gonna be in your audience? And then think about how you're going to uh, communicate this to your audience. Do you wanna provide a definition and description? Do you wanna use cause and effect? Or compare and contrast? These are all things to think about. When you identify your audience, I want you to think about who's gonna be reading your paper? And um, what, how are you gonna sound when you're talking to them? Is it going to be your peers? Is it going to be other teachers? Who's gonna be your audience? Here's a really important one. Using related ideas. We always wanna make sure that we're grouping our, our related information together in a paragraph. We're gonna talk about that as we go through it. And here's the point where we get to choose our topic. Think about something that's interesting or perhaps an important problem that you wanna share with others. And then think about what facts, details, and definitions will you want to include in your writing? Now it's time to plan your essay. So start writing some of those main ideas and details down. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's switch it over here and take a look. I have an example that we're gonna look at today. So this happens to be Serena. She's gonna be our example 
uh, writer today. And Serena decided that she was going to use this as her graphic organizer so that she could have her main idea and her details written here. I want you to pay attention. She does a really nice job of putting things in a sequential order so that she knows what's going to happen first, next, and last in her story. So let's look. She has right here, here's her topic, her main idea. I have always wanted to be a chef. Okay, so I wonder what she's gonna write about. Let's find out. My aunt is a chef and her life is glamorous. I imagined her being relaxed at work. She told me it is different than I imagined. She works long hours and does not get to relax at work. She told me there are also good things about being a chef. And she encouraged me to pursue the idea of becoming a chef. So these are all of Serena's ideas that she used when planning her writing. Okay, now I also wanna say, do you think that she was able to go just from this right into her final draft and have it typed up and beautiful? Do you think she did that just on the first try? Probably not. She probably had to go through that writing process multiple times before she was able to have it at this level. But let's look. She's got one, two, three, four, five paragraphs. Okay, let's find out what it is that Serena wrote about. Read with me. So, Why I Wanna Be a, Sh a Chef by Serena D. Ever since I can remember, I have wanted to be a chef. I think it is because my Aunt Marcy is a chef. Although she works hard, her life seems glamorous. She is head chef at a famous restaurant and she often cooks for movie stars. That's pretty awesome, right? I had always imagined Aunt Marcy in her kitchen with a smile on her face, thinking up, brand, thinking up a new, brand new creation. I thought she was able to walk out into the dining room and visit with celebrities who came to her restaurant. I pictured her weekly trips to the farmer's market gathering the freshest ingredients to put in her recipes. Recently, she told me what it was really like to be a chef. Aunt Marcy said that the picture I had in my mind was not completely accurate. She rarely gets to experiment with her cooking and baking anymore because she is so focused on preparing dishes already on the menu. Another problem is that she is almost never has time to go into the dining room to greet her friends, let alone the celebrities. And worst of all, her trips to the farmer's market are usually well-planned and hurried. This was not encouraging news, but Aunt Marcy said that there were positive aspects to being a chef as well. Even though she works hard, Aunt Marcy said that she does not mind. Also, she says that if you love what you're doing, it does not seem like such hard work. Overall, Aunt Marcy encouraged me to keep thinking about being a chef if I think I will enjoy it. She suggested taking cooking classes as I get older. She assured me that I will know soon enough if being a chef is not for me. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, she did a fantastic job writing and I can't wait to take you through that whole writing process. I can't wait to see you and back here tomorrow on PBS. Have a good one, bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.